Herb and I go back to the army together, and uh, we were just friends there, and when he was looking for an editor and didn't, and I was available in, in New York, I just set up my own company. He grabbed me right away, thank goodness, because he, he had so much work. I think at one point I must have had 10 editors or more working under me doing his work. In fact, he got to the point, he said, Sid, name your own price. I'm, I don't want you to be paying them all because I was making a fortune off of um, And he said, uh, you work for me until we're done. And he said, I'll take care, put them on my payroll. And that was <laughs> a good thing because we did, we the people, uh, Coronet Blue, the nurses, the defenders, and I think there are one or two others in there. Well, that Brenner was in there, I think. Brenner? Oh, yeah, Brenner. I always keep thinking of that because of Arthur Lewis, who was a pr rather, he produced it, and I forget that he worked under, uh, again, he was a friend of Brodkin, so he, had been le he was left pretty much alone to do that show, and he was also a friend of mine. What was Herb like, personally and professionally? Can you describe him? Well, I, I found him a very honest, reliable man who could be very tough. And uh, I liked him, that's all I could say. And we got along great. But as I say, we had a background of coming out of the army together, and uh, I, I I never had any experience where I had an argument with him. I mean, he would sit there and say, "Look, change this or do that." You did it. I mean, or you could talk to him, and if he thought you were right, he would say, "Fine," but uh, he was not. He was a very uh, good producer. What do you think he saw in you as an editor? Well, easygoing, honest, and a hell of a worker, and a, probably one of the best editors in the business at the time. <laughs> That's about it.